Namaste beautiful yogis, for the month of August, please join me for the new booty program called Booty 3.0. We're going to work on booty, legs, core and so much more on my website. A lot of new classes, new moves, inspiring classes, spiritual and emotional work. So I'll see you on there. Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. I'm Ali and today we're doing Capricorn from the astrological series. Capricorn is one of the very mystical, very spiritual signs when we look at the levels or we have levels of looking at it. It is the sign that sits at the top of the astrological wheel. The first six signs are below the horizon, the second half above the horizon with Capricorn at the very top. Capricorn represents the top of the hierarchy. In on a mundane level, it represents government, the top of the corporation, the ruling structure. On a physical level, it represents the structure in the body, the skeleton, the bones. On a spiritual level, of course, it represents the top, so the liberation of the soul. The soul comes into the physical, into manifestation, into humanity, in the opposite sign of Capricorn, in Cancer. In Cancer is the first initiation into humanity, the first coming into a physical body. The first three signs before cancer are the world of ideas. We're, we're coming into humanity, but still not in the physical. Uh, remember, we're talking about the journey of the soul here on a more metaphysical level, and it gets more and more trippy as we go into the last sign. So prepare to spin around and break out of the, um, uh, the normal bandwidth through which you observe reality and to just think outside of that narrow bandwidth. Because reality, as we know, is a perception. We perceive a very narrow um, part of reality and reality is um, infinite. The frequencies and are infinite, the timelines, the dimensions, everything is infinite and we see such a narrow part of it. So astrology helps us think in larger, bigger terms. Back to Capricorn. So Capricorn, it's kind of a brooding, kind of similar to Scorpio, brooding, deep, dark sign. Why? Because it is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn, <laughs> oh boy, do we all love Saturn. Saturn represents slavery, misery, poverty, sickness, disease, the matrix. And the irony here is that where Saturn sits in your chart, it is a tool to see where you can achieve bigger liberation. Because after slavery, of course, freedom is way more appreciated, more profound. So Saturn is the tool or the place where we look at in our chart to see where we can actually break out of the matrix, where we can achieve a higher grade of freedom or a higher grade of health and so forth. Now, Saturn is also the Lord of Time, which is the matrix, which is this dimension, so the linear time. And aging, and a lot of the Capricorn um, dominant people, uh, they only get more youthful and more beautiful and greater with time. As they age, they improve. That thing with the wine <laughs> analogy. So, um, as... Um, I mentioned it is at the top of the chart. So on a mundane level, as I explained, it's just the ruling structure and we're right now in Saturnian times, in Capricorn times. This whole um, thing that happened in 2020 was Saturn conjunct Pluto in Capricorn and that does not happen often. So this is uh, the death of structure. We re-examine structures that do not work very well in society. We re-examine the matrix basically. And what happens is up to the consciousness of humans. What level of reality we're gonna be able to observe, connect and exist in. Uh, so yes, Capricorn, Ultimately, it is the sea goat, the mountain goat, the, represented by the symbol of the sea goat, the mountain goat, or the unicorn. The sea goat is half goat, goat with the tail of a fish, so it lives in both worlds of emotions and form. And it can really, it can control them or um, use them um, equally well. So Capricorn is, once you reach that top of consciousness, you liberate the consciousness outside of the um, 
slavery of the matrix, of the whole, the chain of the matrix. And what is the matrix? The matrix is Cancer, the opposite sign, 180 degrees is the first incarnation of the human uh, soul into the physical form. The first three signs, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, we have come into humanity in the form of ideas, still not in a physical form. We become born into a physical form, into a physical being, into a human body in Cancer. So think in, in, in terms of ideas here, obviously. Uh, if this is all new to you, just think outside the box basically to understand the symbolism here or the, what it represents. So we are born into a physical form, into a physical body in Cancer. That is the moon. Moon rules that dimension, that reality, which is the matrix. This here is a dream within a dream. And in Capricorn, we have the capacity to liberate the consciousness. The consciousness is trapped into the matrix, is trapped into that level of frequency of the physical. And Capricorn is the position, the place where the soul can break free and become one with the source again. It's profound, but because the goat wants to serve or the goat wants to um, um, work with the collective, it goes back down on uh, the mountain to give that gift of knowledge or gift of enlightenment to Aquarius who can serve the community and help with the enlightenment of humanity. So the individual journey in Capricorn of liberation of the soul um, can uh, become the liberation of the collective soul or the human soul. Profound, right? Is there anything else I should say? This is really deep. It's, it's getting deeper and deeper. So um, remember that Capricorn, it, it, is a, uh, it has two sides to it. One is very restrictive. In a chart where Saturn is, you're going to feel restricted. You're going to find restriction, obstruction. Um, you're going to need to work hard at the places that are ruled by Saturn. But at the same time, you do have the capacity. It's within your reach, within your soul's capacity to uh, elevate there. And that is the, um, also um, the Saturn return in the 30s and in the 60s. That is the gifts of it. It's a really, really hard time for a person because you're going to be uh, asked to re-examine your core structural beliefs. And that is your capacity to break free because our beliefs are our levels of perception of reality. Reality is, a, as I've mentioned, reality is infinite. The dimensions, the timelines, everything, the frequencies. There is infinite level of if infinite levels of reality, and we have a tiny, a straw of a bandwidth of seeing reality, of perceiving reality. So here in Capricorn, we have the capacity to really break free and find new levels of reality, even if it's not all levels, because that is a journey, obviously, but to widen our scope, our, our vision, our perception of reality, so we can see more of it. It is out there. We just can't see it. So um, it is deep. I understand that this is very spinny and deep, but that's where we actually start to break out of the conditioning out of the belief system, out of the so-called matrix, which is the dream, and we can start living in, in um, higher densities of reality. All right, let's begin and let's flow with strength and ease. shoulders back and down, lift through the crown of the head, bring your hands over the heart and here Capricorn of course represents death, one of the signs that represents death, death of the ego. So it is rebirth and it is the new. As in Scorpio, we were able to work on the shadow, on 
the unconscious that came into our understanding in cancer, from cancer, the unconscious becoming a part of us, and in Scorpio, we're working on the shadow so that once we can integrate our shadow into the conscious, we're able to move through Sagittarius and merge the ego with the personality. And furthermore, in Capricorn, we're able to liberate, to enlighten ourselves. The soul merges with source only to come back down again because it wants to liberate humanity as a whole. So we're able to integrate all the shadow work that we did. We're able to really step out uh, outside of all the conditioning. We're in control of the emotional and the physical world here. And breathe that into your being. Breathe that concept into your being here. You're integrating all your bodies into one body. One consciousness. You're an individual consciousness within the collective and you're both at the same time. Inhale the hands over the head, lift and reach. Exhale, dive. Inhale, look ahead, plank, chaturanga, up dog. Chaturanga, lay on the floor, hands behind your head, elbows lifting and aligning with your ears in the same plane. Lift here and reach over to the right, center, left so you're squeezing your elbow back or to the right one center one left right center left center three four center four five center five great hands underneath the shoulders exhale down dog breathe close the eyes for a moment imagine the skeleton of the body and now surround it and make it or see it as a crystalline structure surrounded by a crystalline body inhale the right leg up step it through high lunge Let's hinge forward, dip the back knee, hinge back up, dip the knee. Two, dip, lift, dip. Three, dip, lift, dip. Four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Hands in prayer, twist. Open the right arm up. Exhale the hands on the floor. Step back in plank. Bring your knees down on the floor. And we're going to do a few, rather than structured Capricorn moves, we're gonna do a few fluid moves. Remember, Saturn has mastery over both when in its highest form, of course, or Capricorn, I should say. Also, Capricorn rules the knees, so through humility, initiation. is the sign of initiation, the initiate. That's where we become initiated into 
awakening. <sighs> Great. Chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Down dog. Take the left leg up. Step it through. We're gonna go through the same combo. Combo move. Dip. Hinge. Uh, excuse me, now dip. <laughs> I started a little early. Dip, it doesn't matter. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Squeeze. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Hands in prayer twist. Initiation. It's a key word here. Open. Open the left arm up. Climbing up that mountain, ascending up to become initiated. Release. Exhale. Plank. Knees on the ground. And we're going to come up. Hands behind the head. Again, aligning with the ears. Lean back in one straight line. Come back up. So your core is fully connecting and so are your quads. Again, knees. Hands on the ground, chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Down dog. Inhale the right leg up. Open the hip. Wow thing. This probably is the pose of the series. Side plank. Reach up. And also remember that when that initiation happens, this is already the domain of Uranus. Hold it. And we're gonna reach up and reach underneath the shoulder. Reach up, underneath the shoulder. Reach up, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Plank, chaturanga, plank, opposite side. Hold it. Reach up, reach under one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One legged down dog, left leg up, well thing on the left side. Lift. Plank, Chaturanga, plank, bend your knees, walk your feet a little closer to you, and here we're gonna do a combination. So knees hovering over the air, we're gonna be efficient as a, having direction and efficiency as a Capricorn. Lift, so the knees are hovering over the ground, take the left leg up, 
and we're gonna press up through the heel and then thread it across from your body. <laughs> Left knee comes towards the right elbow and back. <sighs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Step it through, left leg steps through, right hand on the floor, twist, open the chest up, maybe open the left arm a little wider. Great, back to our knees hovering position, right leg this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's not for six, six, seven, eight, nine, which is a Capricorn term, 10, and step it through. Open the right arm up. And yes. Plank. Hold it. Open the chest. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Press into the heels. And down dog. Breathe. One more time, take your hovering position. Take your left knee, left foot off the floor, and you're going to tap it and kick it across. So knee down and across and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, 10. This was something. So shoulder builder, core builder, everything builder. In Capricorns, natives are often builders in one way or another. All right, opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great. Down dog, take the right leg up. Step it through, warrior one. Straighten the lead knee. Coming into parallel with the floor. Left hand on the floor, right arm up, revolving triangle. We're efficient, as I mentioned, and Capricorn is one of my main, main top signs in my own personal chart. Reach over the head and press the right hip back. Working here with subtleties, delicious and lower the chest over the right leg. Plank, Chaturanga, up dog, Chaturanga, down dog, take the left leg up, warrior one. Work with your hips, try to square them to 
the degree that you can. Straighten, chest parallel to the floor. Take the right hand down, left arm up. over, press the hip back, fingertips reaching actively, great, exhale, chest over the leg, surrendering to the exhalation, to the stretch, to the breath, to the moment, to the mind, a lot of opening happens, opening on every level, during surrender, we learn things that we were never previously able to learn on a spiritual, emotional, and material level. Surrender is a cornerstone. Stone. Wrong. Downward facing dog. Deep, deep breath. Inhale the right leg up. Warrior two. Again, in each pose, there is friction, tension, a place of surrender a place of equilibrium, neutrality, and a place opposite of that where things fight each other. So we're continuously flowing and finding this place of surrender. Reverse it. Side angle. Over the head. Both hands on the floor, and we're going to stick the right knee on top of the triceps here and squeeze, squeeze, lift. Release the knee from the touch of the triceps and squeeze. Great. Chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Down dog. Let's keep moving, left leg up. Step it through. Warrior two. Again, you can learn a lot from books and other people and teachers, but it will be a fraction of what you can learn from tuning in, creating self-observation or allowing self-observation to be a guide, a teacher. So again, surrendering to the pose. You can close your eyes and surrender to the pose. And let's reach up, reverse warrior. Sit either onto your heels or between your heels and stretch here. Now, I'll tell you my personal thoughts here in the form of structure, breaking out of the limitations of reality. And also the next domain is Uranus, where 
we're breaking out of the limited. And how does that happen? Initiation, how does initiation happen? Humans have been forever seeking, searching initiation, um, mastery, transcendence, enlightenment, awakening, and we're still not awakened as humanity. So why, why is it so difficult? I think the trick is, and there is a trick, is that we have accepted within the matrix that it is that enlightenment is a really difficult task. You have to be perfect, you have to have no sin ever, not a wrong thought ever. You have to sit on a mountain uh, forever. Um, whatever religion you think of, mastery is difficult. It's not achievable really within religious beliefs most. And hence, it's in our subconscious, it's in our programming that it is not achievable. Not achievable. We have self-sabotaging mechanisms to not achieve something that we have because we have it. So to me, that is breaking out of the programming and the belief system, which the belief system again is a structure in order to liberate perception and lift up and take the right leg back, squeeze the left knee into the top of the triceps and hover it in the air, <laughs> plank, chaturanga, up dog, chaturanga, down dog, take the right leg up, step it through, high lunge. Here we're going to take a staggered lunge squat and we're gonna lower down and take a one-legged deadlift and come back up, same thing, lower down two, deadlift, lower down three, deadlift, four, five, Six, squeeze, straight back, seven, this is from the booty program, eight, and last one. By the way, we started the booty program on the website August 1st, and it's booty program 3.0, so if you're not there, it's gonna be massive amount of fun. Step it back. I had to plug that in, I forgot to mention it. And it's my baby. All right, hands over the heart. Warrior three. Hold it. Release down, vinyasa. Down dog, take the left leg up, step it through high lunge, same combination, stagger squat, so when you stagger it, natural curvature in the spine, you lower the knee down and you try to keep the hips square and then lift one, two, you can keep your arms out, three, it's a little more difficult, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Step it back, hands over the heart. Warrior three. Release, vinyasa. Take the right leg up. Step it through. Come up, stagger squat again. This time, we're gonna lean forward rather than have an upright position. So we're targeting a different part of 
the legs floating back. And we're gonna, as we dip into the squat, we're gonna touch the floor and then kick the leg back, touch the floor. So the entire time we're in a, with a straight back, but leaning forward, hinging forward. And you feel a different part of your booty perking up. All right, one, two, keep the straight lines, please, three, Capricorn in me says that, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, step it back. Chaturanga. We're rushing, moving, <laughs> working, directing towards the left side. Take the left leg up, step it through. Lean forward, staggered squat. So the hips are level. Again, we're we're finding that even alignment as much as we can. We're human. There is asymmetry in every human. Asymmetry. Lean forward. One, two, three, four. Find that group of muscles that are working on the left side them up with your mind five six seven eight nine ten this time come up and take a wide stance and here you can just move side to side Have your feet pointing forward, arms out, and move side to side, the upper body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Open the knees out. Plie. And reach to one side, reach to the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Open the arms out and twist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Straighten the legs, straighten the feet. And here, you're gonna open the arms out. I wanna say this is from a class called Booty Hologram. And we're working with quantum concepts in the third one. But we're going to take white step, side lunge, come up, side lunge, come up. The entire time you're trying to keep your arms out, you're in no way getting close. Get parallel to the ground as much as you can. A mirror would be helpful. Without a mirror, you really have to tune in and trust. One, two, three, four, five, push the hips back, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here, we're gonna step to the left. So our left leg is facing the back of or the front of the mat, the end of the mat. <laughs> This is where it gets very spinny quantum, which ended at the end. And we're going to keep the right arm up, step the right leg out, sorry. Touch down and come back up. One, two, silent feet. Sophie reminded me. Four, try to keep that arm. Five, six, 
seven, working with the structure. Eight, nine, 10, opposite side. So this is completely working, opposite side. Feel your structure with appreciation to be your tool for enlightenment, for expansion, for soul expansion, beyond the expansion of the mind. One, try to keep that arm, two, try to look at the horizon, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, step at the front. You can take white stand, just, just feet outside of the mat and just Move your hips side to side. In a less structured way. Step the right foot to the front, left behind it, forward fold. Opposite side, come halfway up, switch, fold. Feel the IT band stretching. Halfway up, engage your core and back and come all the way up. Take one more, stand out, bend the right knee, and take left arm out, right arm forward. Side lunge to knee lifting, and try to keep your arms at the same place as much as possible, knee trying to lift. Two, three, four, five, Six, squeeze the belly, two, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Opposite side. So now we're gonna move the arms. Left arm forward. Right arm out. Side lunge, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and face the front. Reach, exhale down. Inhale, halfway up, plank. Lower down onto your belly, reach to the sides. So arms back, reaching back. And we're going to, again, move the right hand almost down the right leg and then opposite side, but with length. So we're not shortening any, any part of the body, we're lengthening, elongating here. Great. Sit onto your booty. Lower down onto your back. Step onto the right leg and 
coming to bridge on the right side, shoulders pressing down, left leg elongated. So we're gonna press into bridge, lift the leg and bend the knee in towards the chest, lower down, come back up, one, two, three, four, five, opposite side, one, two, three, four, five, change sides, this time double combo, so lift, stepping onto the right foot, left knee in, one, and lower down, extend the leg, come back up, and dip the toes, lower down, knee tuck, lower down, toe dip. So let's go, remember, you're just swapping back and forth, knee, knee tuck, toe dip. At the same time, the right side is working. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, <laughs> four, last one, five, five, good job, all right, opposite side, same thing, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five, five. All right, lower down, hug your knees in, rock into place, giving yourself a hug, and tuning back into the vessel that you occupy the biology that you occupy. Extend the left leg and keep your right shoulder on the floor, left knee across the pine twist. out of it we are going to prepare for plow lift your legs up and over Working on the throat center through Capricorn 2, astrologically, and through plow pose, which is one of the main centers in the human body, heart, throat, third eye, third eye, the domain of Aries, throat is the other, earth, earth sign, Taurus. shoulder stand and you can do half a shoulder stand so you prop your hips onto your hands you can 
do your fists and sit back. And slowly roll out. Bring your hands behind your knees and rock up and back a few times. Coming into seated, forward fold. hands behind, reverse plank. Lower down, take your right hand to your left big toe and just lift it and look behind, that's our twist. See the twist for today? I wanna keep it interesting and different so you know, I'm gonna do all the same poses every time. We're expanding the mind and also making it younger through the energy of breaking out of the timeline. <laughs> Capricorn. See, I can make Capricorn fun. <laughs> I don't think that's the common, common notion of Capricorn and Saturn. But we can look at it from the lesson learner, seeker perspective. It is the initiate after all. And opposite side. Instead of looking at Capricorn and Saturn as the chain of time, we can look at it as the place where break out that chain because that chain of time is in all the other signs before Capricorn. Here we come into a, a collision peak. Lay down. And you can actually, before going into Shavasana, you can roll your onto your heels, roll your toes in and out, kind of a hip balancing move here, a little bit of the physical therapy series, and physical therapy can be looked at as a Capricorn domain, it can, but as you see reality is fluid, we can interpret it in many ways and as we get into the higher densities, we see far more. Our perspective becomes bigger of a sign of our energy. All right, so close your eyes, make yourself comfortable for Shavasana. And tune your vision towards looking at your body. Looking from an outside, external perspective at your body laying on the mat. and you occupy multiple places, your consciousness. So you're within your body and at the same time you're outside of the body. You can look from an outsider perspective, from the outside in, and you can look from within, from the inside out, and both of them coexist at the same time. And as you're looking, from outside, from above, at yourself, a part of your finer, less dense bodies also 
comes out of the physical and joins the outsider, the outside viewer. As if you're hovering a few inches off the mat, floating, experiencing lesser density, fully you, 100% fully your consciousness. And all of a sudden you look around and you see a brick wall. And that brick wall is the size that you see it to be. It can be the entire earth, it can be your room, it can be a tiny box that you barely fit in. And it can be the universe or the galaxy. It can be big or small, but it is there. And that brick wall is just there and you cannot cross it because that brick wall is your beliefs. It is your belief system. And that is as far as you can go. Take a breath in and all of a sudden see that brick wall dissolving as if it is becoming stardust, particles, or even it is liquefied, it becomes water maybe. But all of a sudden, it starts to dissolve, more and more of it dissolving, melting, liquefying, becoming dust, disappearing. And all of a sudden, you feel your heart lighter and your mind brighter. Vision wider and your soul more expanded, your consciousness more expanded. You're all of a sudden, all of a sudden becoming aware of a wider range of reality of more of reality. To still see all of the old you plus some of the expanded you. It is all there. You're what you are plus so much more. You're part of this this time, this place, and part of eternity at the same time. You occupy the dense and the finer layers all at the same time. You're able to dissolve walls and expand continuously. And slowly, as you were hovering over the body, drop back in onto the mat, into the finite, finite body, the dense body, but still you in each and every layer. Take a big breath in and feel the air, feel the floor, feel your body, feel the skin, feel. Feel the heart. Feeling the body. Yet also feeling the soul. And there is no conflict here, no contrast. It is all one.
Let's stretch the toes. Reach over the head. Roll onto your side. Press yourself with your eyes still closed and just sit it. Inhale the hands over the head. Bring them over the third eye and let's blink the eyes open and smile. Let's bring them over the heart and let's bow to our hearts for their forgiveness, compassion, generosity and love. Namaste. I'll see you on the website with the new classes and on here with the rest of the astrology series. Thank you.